The first challenge was getting in front of customers. The second one is building trust. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Popniklov, and we've got a great show lined up for you. Beth, we haven't done a podcast together, like the two of us, in like a month. Is that right? Maybe longer. We made it happen just for Kevin. He brought us He brought us together. Thanks, Kevin. Great to meet you guys. We're really excited to welcome Kevin Forstel into the studio today. He is the CEO and co-founder of Dozer and has got some incredible insights about how to build better relationships with contractors. Kevin, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Really happy to be here. Um, appreciate you having me on. Kevin, before we dive in, why don't you take a few minutes to introduce yourself to our listeners and tell them a little bit about Dozer? I, Kevin Forstel, co-founder, CEO of Dozer. I'm a, a contractor by trade, uh, went to school for landscape architecture, came out, started a, a landscaping business, um, You know, grew to be one of the larger uh, landscaping businesses in Canada. Uh, out of a need for that business, started Dozer. Dozer is a company that's obsessed with bringing e-commerce to the heavy equipment rental space. Uh, it started as a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, platform, kind of like an Airbnb for heavy equipment rentals. Uh, and over the years, we have transitioned into more of a an aggregator uh, for professional supply of heavy equipment rentals. So you can think of us kind of like Hotels.com for uh, the rental of bulldozers, excavators, skid steers, and uh, all aerial work platforms. Airbnb for heavy equipment is a fantastic tagline, by the way. Just fantastic. So understandable out of the gate. I love it. Kevin, so I've got a good buddy of mine who is a, you know, in the excavation business. And so I know very, very little about like the heavy machinery um, space. I actually uh, went to Conag back in January um, and nice. watched the show with him. I was telling Beth about it. I was like, man, like the inner five-year-old in me was nerding out the entire time because it's a bunch of just massive equipment. And they're like, yeah, come on in, come sit in this million dollar dump truck. My understanding is that traditionally in the heavy machinery space, there's one of two options, either A, you're going to buy something used and the quality might break down more quickly, or you're going to have to get a loan to lease it uh, instead of actually purchasing it. And so it's a very capital intensive um, option for these contractors and excavation companies and whoever, even developers for that matter, to do this work. Can, can you explain a little about how you all are, for lack of a better term, trying to disrupt that space a bit and pick up any pieces that I missed with issues that currently exist in the marketplace? Yeah, you bet. So, um, you know, I can talk about my, my previous career. Um, you know, we used to own hundreds of these pieces of equipment, um, you know, large tractors, 120 horsepower uh, agricultural tractors, uh, three yard articulating wheel loaders, mini excavators, skisters, and, you know, all of the above. Um, they are very expensive, capital intensive. They, it's a challenge for growing businesses um, to kind of protect their uh, debt to equity uh, ratio. Um, and, you know, what I used to do is, you know, there's a combination of outright owning uh, equipment, you know, financing it, leasing it, uh, and then renting it. Um, so half of my fleet would have been uh, rented for various reasons, uh, but probably number one, uh, just because uh, it is so capital intensive and difficult to you know be able to borrow that that amount of money. Um, but my learnings over the years, uh, you know, well at at that landscaping company, and then you know even more so now being at a dozer is there is a real trend moving towards rental of equipment. I found it very very difficult to. Um, maintain a fleet of that size, right? So, um, you know, we were really great at, you know, doing landscape maintenance and building world-class, you know, landscape construction projects and, you know, winning awards for them. But we weren't a rental company, right? And this is what rental companies really specialize in is owning equipment and um, servicing it and, you know, having it kind of rental ready. It's always, you know, ready for whatever job is next. And, uh, that requires a lot of resources, a lot of people, a, you know, a great shop and, and just processes. And it was way more expensive than we expected it to be. And um, 
and and just required a lot of uh, focus from from management as well. So maybe like a bit of a downfall at that company, but a lot of learnings, you know, to be able to get ready for the next one and really kind of seeing that that need out there in the industry to be able to support rental. Um, rental is a very, very important piece of equipment life cycle in the construction industry. You have this really cool business idea. It clearly speaks to a pain point. It solves a very big problem that's holding back a lot of really talented contractors. I look at your business and when you explain it, especially like the Airbnb of heavy machinery, I'm like, this is a no brainer. I, if I'm a contractor, I'm like, I can suddenly do basically anything. What hurdles are you experiencing that you're maybe surprised by or having to continually overcome that makes it seem like not such a no brainer for contractors potentially? I know I mentioned the Airbnb for heavy equipment rentals, and we've made a bit of a pivot. And it's an important point to point out where we're more like hotels.com for heavy equipment rentals now. How do you see the difference between the two? Well, my previous company, you know, our landscape company would list our equipment when we weren't using it, uh, like our snow tractors. Uh, we'd list them for rent in the summer time and farmers would rent them. What the challenge was there is, you know, myself being a contractor, I really didn't know how to keep my equipment rental ready. So the example that I'll use is I had these snow tractors, I'd rent them to farmers. Farmers would call and say, Hey, the air conditioner doesn't work in, you know, this, this tractor. And I would say, I didn't know it had an air conditioner. Right, it's a snow it's tractor. A snow tractor. <laughs> That's kind of like an extreme example of, you know, the challenge with sort of the Airbnb model. I think that there will be that model in the future, but uh, maybe not quite yet. The hotels.com experience is that where we have sort of evolved to is the contractors want to rent equipment online. The suppliers, you know, the United Rentals of the world, all of the independent uh, suppliers, um, you know, the, the one branch to the 20 branch to the, you know, United Rentals that has, you know, 12, 1300 branches. Um, they're all trying to figure out how to connect with contractors who are online searching for the equipment. And mm -hmm. that's really where Dozer comes in. We're, we're saying, hey, look, we can help facilitate this transaction. The challenge, you know, that the contractors are looking to overcome is I want to find the equipment and I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time setting up accounts with different uh, rental houses because that, that takes a lot of time, right? Like they, they, they don't necessarily have, uh, you know, the back office staff to help with this. So setting up 10 rental accounts is difficult. Um, but, you know, setting up one that can access 10,000 rental companies is easy, <laughs> right? Uh, so, that, you know, it's, it's these kind of things um, that, uh, you know, is kind of where we were paying attention to and trying to step in and help. What hurdles are you finding with that model you have to overcome from the contractor side? There's two things. Um, one is it takes a lot of time and effort and money to be able to get out in front of contractors, generally, once we're in front of them, the value prop is really obvious and they like it and, you know, we can grow. But getting that brand recognition out there is like a very important, but, you know, a challenging hurdle that we have to get past. The other thing is building trust. The contractors are renting equipment, you know, and we kind of started the, um, the conversation saying, hey, some of these pieces of equipment are like a million bucks. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the rental on these pieces of equipment is like, you know, it could be $200 a day, but it could be $15,000 a month. And that's a lot of money to put on a credit card for the first time. You know, I've just seen this new company online. Yeah. They're an aggregator. It makes so much sense. I really want to use it, but like, should I put my credit card in? Uh, so that's kind of a hurdle that we have to yeah, get by. And, uh, sure. you know, that, that takes like a really like a really uh, focused, uh, iterative approach to, you know, really have to pay attention to the customer to be able to solve that, uh, that challenge. So you mentioned there, Kevin, that mm -hmm. your biggest challenge is getting in front of the contractor. Can you share with us what's working for you to get in front of them? Like what are some of the tactics and strategies that you're using? We do a lot of different things. It's a multi multifaceted yeah. approach. We have a, um, you know, really strong uh, email communication strategy. We have a social strategy. We do a lot of SEM, um, you know, Google ads, but probably our most important is organic. So we spend a lot of time uh, working on um, 
optimizing from a technical perspective uh, our website to optimize for uh, search engine optimization. Uh, and then we also spend a lot of time building quality content, uh, making sure that they show up on the site and they see exactly what they wanted and then they mm -hmm. engage with it. So, you know, we spend a lot of time on, on working on that uh driving organic on paid traffic. When it comes to your messaging in social and email, is there anything that you've seen work better than others? I assume it's not just to have product. Do you want to rent for all of the reasons that you just said? So is there a specific message or perception that contractors are responding to? The first challenge was getting in front of customers. The second one is building trust. Mm -hmm. So you know, we spend a lot of time building trust on these channels. We talk about things that are relevant to contractors. And what's really cool is I'm now in a position that I can talk about things as a contractor that I may not have been able to talk about in the past. I can open up. Other contractors aren't my competitors anymore. I'm in the know and a friendly, and I can talk about it like, for example, pain points, right? Like, hey, you know, sometimes it's very, very difficult as a snow removal contractor to work with, uh, you know, property managers. It can be a very thankless job, right? You put in a whole lot of uh, hours, you miss, you know, you're missing like uh, Christmas morning because you have to make sure that the snow is plowed by 6 a.m. so that people can get out of their driveways. I can talk about this kind of stuff now, which is really fun and, and like, I really enjoy it, but it's also the kind of stuff that I think, you know, other contractors that I've, I've heard from is like, thank, thank goodness somebody is talking about this because... <laughs> you know, we're working our butts off here and, you know, nobody appreciates it. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think, you know, we do a lot of that kind of stuff and, and try to, you know, kind of build trust that way. Um, there's a lot of different ways, but that's an example. I'd be curious to get your take on advice you would give manufacturers, knowing what you know about changes that are happening and how contractors are purchasing and what they're thinking about, both as somebody who played in the space and now is kind of selling into it. What would you tell a manufacturer who's like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to increase market share. I'm trying to go after this market. What would you recommend? One thing at Dozer, we're starting to realize we have this really, really unique uh, data set where we we know where equipment is needed, um, where there's there just is not enough supply in certain geos with certain CAD classes of equipment um, because we have such high demand coming uh, through our platform and we can see mm -hmm. what goes unfulfilled. Right. So when we have the majority of uh, uh, suppliers online and the equipment still is unable to be fulfilled, um, the re equipment requests, you know, we can kind of say, hey, this is exactly where you need to drop another 30 ton articulating dump truck. And we know that that's consistent year over year and that that machine would sit at 70% utilization if you were to put a machine there tomorrow. Maybe it's not as much advice, but just, hey, we've got some really... Uh, interesting data available that we're trying to figure out how we can share back. Dozer is trying to build a platform that is really friendly to everyone, right? We're, we're trying to build it so that, uh, you know, it is, it's solving all the problems uh, that, you know, the suppliers have that, you know, the OEMs are interested in also solving and then that the contractors have without really being a, a, a disruptor. We're not really big into talking about ourselves as a disruptor. We don't think that we are. We think that we want to, we want to be sort of the, the nice, friendly company that's building um, really great technological solutions to assist something that's already trying to happen and uh, kind of keep everyone involved um, at the same time. Uh, if that makes any sense. This has been really helpful for our listeners. If they want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? LinkedIn, Kevin Forstel on our dozer. LinkedIn is probably the best way as well. Um, pretty active on there and happy to answer any, uh, any questions as they, uh, they come around. Kevin, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. And for our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, check us out at venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more until next time. I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Popniglov. Thanks everybody.